We are 15 minutes after the hour. It's a Crop Progress Tuesday, and we have, of course, the uh, USDA numbers we've shared with you. But every Tuesday, we take a trip to the eastern part of the country, Whitehall, Maryland, to be exact. Our good friend Ben Hushin calls that home. He's with The Mill. Check out that website, themill.com, and a lot of great information no matter where you are in the country. Great agronomic information. Ben, I hope uh, things are a little bit better weather-wise than a week ago. Uh, good morning, Mark. Yes, we, uh, of course, missed you on the 4th of July as we all had a chance to celebrate America's greatness. You bet. But uh, we, we, we had a below, uh, we, we were a little cooler mm -hmm. for the last seven days, which was great for farmers to get a lot of work done. And now the hot, typical July Maryland weather has come back in, hot and humid. And uh, and that's okay, too. Yeah, Make corn grow. Corn likes that, I believe. If it can get that moisture, we've got a radar picture here. It had some rain kind of starting to head your direction, but it looks like it might be dissipating before it gets there. But uh, it is that time of the year. Uh, corn uh, silking and, and the pollination. Talk, you've sent some pictures taken here this, this morning. Talk about what we're going to see here. I did. I uh, caught sight of those at the McElwain, or those fields at the McElwain Farm in Harford County coming into work this morning. And it really reminded me that we uh, it, it's pretty critical to these growers. Uh, corn is starting to tassel. Some started to tassel last week. And we really need, uh, now that we've got heat this week, uh, we're really going to need to catch one of those nice cooling thunderstorms here in the next seven days. Takes You really only have about five, six, seven days of uh, timing to get good pollination on corn. So... We're uh, we're hoping to catch a couple of those rainstorms here the next sometime in the next week or two. Mm -hmm. You also sent some pictures of double crop beans here. The weed harvest mm -hmm. is complete, uh, and we see those beans uh, peeking through some of those fields. Uh, give us an update there, Ben. Yeah, Mark. We uh, you know what farmers they don't like to do one thing at a time. They like to be doing two or three at a time. So uh, they've bailed, you know, combine wheat, good crop. 100 bushel, 80 to 100, 110 on the top, good quality wheat, and immediately baled the straw and, in this case, uh, planted soybeans, double crop behind. We get a little bit of double crop corn up here, but farmers just can't stand to let ground stay open. They, they like to plant something in it just as quickly as they can. How was that wheat crop, by the way, when all was said and done? It was it was good um, above average. Again, typically, fellows that were working on managing it, a couple applications of fungicide, splitting their nitrogen. They're talking about a hundred bushel uh, wheat pretty consistently. Those that didn't, um, that kind of did it the more traditional way in the in the eighty bushel range. But again, good quality. That was the shocker. If you remember, three weeks in a row, I talked to you about wet weather and that was during wheat pollination mm. but uh it we we got through it and we're very fortunate well it's that time of the calendar not only pollination time but uh, you at the mill and your staff uh, important to support our ffa and 4-hers uh, around county fairs in the area mm, yes it is mark the our local one the mason dixon fair which is a pennsylvania state fair uh as you can imagine right on the mason dixon line mm -hmm. Start uh, started last night, runs all week, and it's a good reminder of all the people who volunteer to come out and help uh, set good examples and teach and educate young folks. And and not always in our part of the world, they're not all farm kids. They're kids who are getting to experience the farm through the local fairs. Exactly right. Well, I know that you're very involved in that, and uh, rightfully so. No surprise there. Ben, thanks for the uh, for the update there, the pictures here of the uh, silking and pollination process, that double crop beans going in, and we look forward to your update next week. Mark, I uh, enjoyed it as always. Hope you and your viewers and listeners have a safe week. And you as well. Have a great time. The Mason-Dixon Fair. I love that name. Ben Hushin from The Mill joining us every Tuesday at this time. You want an update in the eastern part of the country? That's what you're going to get every week. Ben Hushin from The Mill. We'll take a break, and I'll get you caught up in the commodity markets, grain and livestock futures trade as we continue after this.